As the Pokemon world grows, we're given more information and new creatures to interact and learn about. However, it's always a big treat whenever Pokemon that we've come to know and love are given new forms that really open up the Pokemon world and give us more to explore. Recently, we've been given a lot of new Pokemon forms. However, they are only new to us because we have only just rediscovered them. These new forms are actually pre-existing forms that came before a lot of well-known Pokemon that we know and love today. But why have many of these previous forms ceased to exist? Or why did these Pokemon change so much over time? Today, we are going to discuss why some of these new old forms have changed so much over the years. Welcome back trainers, and hello if this is your first time here. I'm Ranger Rye, and this is the Ranger Base. Now, as a Sinnoh native myself, lore is a big part of our culture. But there's always new information popping up the more we research it. And wow, do we have some information to go over. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe and give this video a like. And go ahead and leave a comment below on what kind of Pokemon you want to hear me talk about next. Now, we're not going to discuss every new form today because there's still some information missing, but I wanted to talk about some of them that really stuck out to me today. So, why don't we start with this one? Braviary is a large, normal flying type in the form that we know it today that thrives in the Unova region. But in the olden days of Sinnoh, or as it was known as the Hisui region, it was a powerful, psychic flying type. It is pretty interesting that it lost such a powerful typing to become a normal type. Not only that, but Hisuian Braviary was much bigger than its Unovan counterpart, and it preferred to live alone, rather than live in flocks like it's known to do now. One thing we do know is that in the more traditional time of Hisui, people did rely on Pokemon to assist with travel, with things like swimming and flying, with Braviary seeming to be the main choice for flying. That does beg the question as to what exactly happened. Well, one thing we do know is that Braviary were known to travel to Hisui in the winter times from the north, so wherever they were coming from, it was much colder. Perhaps it became too cold and uninhabitable for them to live. And with the large amount of snow in Hisui, and Sinnoh as well, perhaps they continue to migrate to warmer places, with Unova being one of the warmer regions. As for the loss of typing, it's possible that being loner Pokemon, they were in need to heighten their senses to navigate and hunt, but when they landed in a place with more food and favorable conditions like Unova, there wasn't much need for it. It's actually said that Hisuian Braviary really focused its psychic energies to help with skilled hunting and traveling, so if there's a place where it doesn't need to hunt as hard, and if there's less terrain to travel around, it probably didn't need to focus as hard anymore. Not only that, but with the rapid expansion and industrialization of Unova, more people arriving, and a bounty of life and noise, Braviary most likely lost the ability to focus and meditate like it's described in our Hisuian logs. Of course, the only way to know that for sure would be to have a detailed record of their growth and change, but for now, that's just my guess. From the vast skies down to the cold shadows, we move on to the ghostly and vengeful Zoroa and Zoroark. Once again known well for its current forms in Unova, these tricky fox Pokemon have a knack to cause illusions and transform into anything it desires. However, its Hisuian form is said to be born out of spite and malice, because it was rejected by people and forced to live out in the harsh and frozen wilds where it couldn't survive. Now, in lore, it's said that these Pokemon perished and came back to life as ghosts. However, the ghost typing is based more on a biological change that makes their appearance more spectral. But if we look at it more scientifically, these Pokemon adapted to their wild by basically becoming ghostly, using their illusions and powers to give them an edge in nature, appearing as ghosts or spectral figures to ward off enemies and confuse them so they never really had to fight directly. But what happened to this form? Well, this is interesting because these logs indicate that they already existed as the current form they have now in Unova, but they were rejected by people and eventually their form changed. So much like Braviary, it's possible that they also had some sort of migration, perhaps transforming into humans and boarding a ship to live in a region where they could live more peacefully. In this case, a young and busy Unova. However, that's more of my guess than a pure fact. But you know what isn't a guess? If we have any other media outlets, because the answer is yes, we do. 
be sure to check us out on our other media pages in the description below and stay up to date with all the latest happening here at the Ranger Base. Now, I would have never expected Pokemon like Stantler to have roots in Sinnoh, but recent findings have shown that this was indeed the case. Found mostly in the Johto region, Stantler are a normal type deer Pokemon that are gifted with a decent amount of psychic type moves. However, they have never been known to evolve. Until recently. Apparently, Stantler were known to live in Hisui, and when they matured, they could even evolve into Wydeer, becoming a normal psychic type. And this is pretty clear progression, as it grows older and wiser to the point where its psychic type moves become so great that it's like second nature, giving them that second typing. This is a very interesting and natural progression of a species, and it was even to the point that they were beloved by the people of Hisui. But what happened to them? Well, unlike the other Pokemon we've discussed already, this one is a little more clear if we look a little bit closer. You'll notice that Wydeer is an older and more mature Pokemon, with a long beard and white coat, so it stands to reason that a Pokemon that gets older as it evolves might not do well in the wild, or be the best step in its progression. And if you have noticed, it's a trend in Hisui and also in Sinnoh to be filled with many predators and rough environments. So Wydeer probably wouldn't do super well on their own, and Stantler wouldn't have much luck either. Perhaps travelers brought Stantler and Wydeer to other regions, and found the much calmer Johto to be a great environment for them, and because of the lack of predators, the life expectancy of Stantler shot up by a lot. Over time, Wydeer were not as common because Stantler were thriving, so the line just ended. I mean, think about that. If a Pokemon's life expectancy wasn't limited by the predators, instead by its own natural lifespan, they probably became stronger on their own right and they didn't need to get older to become stronger, so they just started lasting longer. Again, this is more of a guess than a fact, but I have a pretty strong feeling about this one. And the final Pokemon I wanted to discuss today is one that surprised all of us when it was announced. Cleaver is an alternate form of Scyther and perhaps a missing link to explain this line's interesting evolutions. Cleaver is a bug rock type that has gained two large axes on its hands in place of Scyther's, well, Scythe hands. I already went in depth on Scyther and Scizor in a previous Ranger log that you can see here. But Cleaver opens up so many more possibilities for this line. Since Scizor requires help from a trainer and the trading process, Cleaver is Scyther's true second form, or at least its natural form. It's said that minerals found only in Hisui can make this Pokemon evolve. But if Hisui is just an older version of Sinnoh, why isn't it possible to make this evolution now? Well, while we don't have a definite answer yet, it could be due to a change in the climate, a shifting in land, and a harvesting of natural resources. Sinnoh does have a rich and thriving coal and fossil industry, so perhaps all of the minerals were used up by people, leaving the Scyther to migrate to a location where they could find similar minerals, or just live peacefully. They eventually settled in the Kanto and Johto region, possibly due to Mount Silver being in between them and having similar minerals. They also probably found the atmosphere much calmer out there, allowing them to thrive and even cohabitate with humans much easier. Of course, there are still a bunch of Pokemon from the Hisui region that have yet to be explained, and I plan on covering them when more information is released. If you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? And if this is your first time here, check out my Ranger Logs for a more in-depth look at Pokemon origins and real-world inspirations. Until next time, keep exploring, trainers!